So I'm well known for being a big fan of Vivaldi. I've made several videos on Vivaldi, and one of the reasons why I like Vivaldi so much is simply because it enables my tab hoarding. I'm a tab hoarder by default. I'm fairly proud of it, actually, because uh, for whatever reason, I find it impressive. I, I, I don't actually find it impressive. It's, it's, it's obviously not the most efficient way of doing things, but... I keep tabs open for a long time. It's how I save things. They're in tabs and tab groups and stacks and workspaces. And that's just the way that I do things. I've done it for you know quite a long time. Uh, and Vivaldi enables me to do that and still stay somewhat organized. That's one of the reasons why I like it so much. Despite the fact that it's not open source. And while the Vivaldi guys like to say, well, we're 95% open source, I hate that because that means that there's 5% that's proprietary and therefore... You know, you, it, the important part's proprietary, okay? The, the, the stuff that makes it anything other than a Chromium browser is proprietary, and that bugs me, but not enough to get me to, you know, stop using it. But, all of that being said, I do, from time to time, like to look at new browsers. And someone in my Discord pointed me towards a new browser that I've never heard of before. It's called the Zen Browser. And I'm assuming that this has been around for a while, given how polished it is. But I'm not actually sure how long it's been around. But I haven't heard of it before. Now, Zen Browser is based on Firefox and is open source. And it is another one of those browsers that is trying really hard to be Vivaldi. Now, I've looked at one of these before called Florp. And Florp is, first off, Terrible name, still a terrible name, but you can tell that they, at least when I tried it, was still very early days when it comes to some of the features that it was trying to build in. It was, I wouldn't say it was buggy, it just wasn't as well polished as you would have liked, right? And I've tried Floor fairly recently again, and it's still kind of an inconsistent experience with some of those Vivaldi features, right? So... I wasn't expecting much when it came to Zen when I saw that some of the things that it had because, well, they're taking Firefox, which doesn't have these features, and building those features in. And I was like, a lot of times you do that, it just doesn't work all that well. You know, like things like vertical tabs in Firefox, you can get them to work well, but you have to try really, really hard, and they almost always feel tacked on, something that doesn't really belong. Uh, same thing with things like workspaces and tab groups and all sorts of these things that kind of like exist in Vivaldi and some other browsers. A lot of times you build those into Firefox, usually via extension, and you find that they just don't really feel like they belong there. And that's kind of what I was expecting with Zen. But, I was kind of surprised. So, today we're going to take a look at Zen. And I'm going to talk about some of my experiences with it over having used it for the last couple days. And I have some thoughts. I have some that are both positive and negative. So, let's go ahead and take a look at Zen. But first, if you'd leave a thumbs up on this video, I'd really appreciate it. It'd really help the channel. So, right here is the Zen browser. So, first off, you can tell that this is a... Firefox based browser like it has the button up here that you kind of normally expect that normally doesn't come up if you have actually if you actually have extensions but it also has its own kind of unique feel to it right it has the vertical tabs over here along the side and it does have a sidebar where you can have the Vivaldi like side panels web side panels and you can put things in there like Twitter or YouTube that these things are here are default I don't use the side panels in Vivaldi the Vivaldi side panels look like this, and like you can see, I don't actually have any here set up. So this is another feature that you could use, but I just never do. I will say that the animation when it pops up is kind of cool. The fact that they've, and that's one thing that kind of flows throughout the browsers, they've done a pretty good job of making things smooth and look nice. It's not something that I really expected. Usually when, again, when you they tack these features on, it always feels like they're tacked on. Here, a lot of the features that I'm going to talk about do feel like they're actually meant to be here, which is very impressive. So, uh, what, the web panels are there. I'm not going to be talking about those anymore because, like I said, I don't use them. I, I, if I'm going to use a web page, I'm just going to go to the web page, or if I need an application, I'll use the application. So, you have the, the vertical tabs here. You can, in the settings, make these expandable by default so they're always expanded but one thing i didn't see in the settings is a way to make these tabs like 
across the top like normal. I didn't find a way to turn vertical tabs off. Now it's possible that it exists and I just didn't find it. The only settings here for tabs appear to be this here, show expand button, expand tabs by default, right? It doesn't say anything here about turning it into a horizontal tab bar. So it looks like if you're gonna use this, you're gonna be stuck with vertical tabs. Now, I don't mind that. I'm, uh, I don't use vertical tabs myself, but they can be kind of cool if you don't use a lot of tabs. And when I say, the reason why I say that is because if you have this thing minimized here, you're gonna have to, and you have a lot of tabs, you're gonna have to kind of search through all of them in order to find what you're looking for. And they, like if you have like four or five different YouTube videos open, you're gonna have to kind of cycle through them. So it doesn't work as well for me with a lot of tabs, but not everyone has as many tabs as I do. It does have the Firefox little drop down here where you can cycle through all of the tabs that you have open, and that's nice. Now, another Vivaldi feature that they do have is workspaces. And this is something that Florp had but was buried and not on by default and wasn't very good. Now, I don't know if it's gotten better. I, I didn't try looking for it in the brief few minutes that I tried it the, the other week. But here... It works almost exactly like in Vivaldi, which is just very impressive. So you have the workspaces button here, and it's on by default, by the way. And you can just go to another workspace, and then you just have that set of tabs open. And then you can go back to the one you were on before. Now, the only thing that I don't care for is it always has the current workspace at the top. I would just like to have a set static order so that it's always in the same place because this just makes me always so switch to the wrong one. So like main here is at the bottom. I want main to always be at the top because it's my main one, right? So I also noticed that there are no key bindings related to workspaces. Now they do claim that the workspaces functionality is in beta. So hopefully that will come in a future update. But as of right now, there's no key binding to switch between workspaces. Hopefully again, that will come. Vivaldi does have that feature and it's actually fairly powerful to do because you can do a whole bunch of cool key binding combinations in order to switch between different workspaces and stuff using actions and stuff. So uh, how many times can I say stuff in the same sentence? Turns out five. Okay, so workspaces is a premier feature for me because it's one of the features that I just use cr like crazy in Vivaldi. So if I actually open up Vivaldi here, I have all of my workspaces here and I actually don't have as nearly as many tabs as I thought I did. Uh, we're looking there what like seven like 60 or something like that probably i have toned it down it always feels like i have more than i actually do but not as impressive as 200 as i thought i did but anyways the, I, as you can see i have workspaces here and they just stay in this order all the time i use them like crazy every time i have a video idea i put it here in the ideas workspace every time I have something that I want to read like a book or something and I don't have a chance to write it down in a note or whatever I put it in a tab and it goes in the reading workspace now in Zen I could do the exact same thing and that's spectacular because that's not something that you can easily do in Firefox now one thing that Zen is missing is tab groups now apparently if we go here and we scroll all the way down, tab groups is something that is coming, it's just not here yet, which is sad because I'm looking at it now and I really want to want you know want to try them because tab groups along with workspaces basically is the tab hoarder's nirvana. If you have a hundred tabs and you have them organized in groups and workspaces, it's like a double edged sword when it comes to organizing all of your tabs. It's awesome. So Hopefully when that comes out, I can try this again because that's going to change the game when it comes to being able to use this as a tab hoarder. Now, if you read the website, you will find some marketing claims like the best way to browse the web. OK, like all browsers say that. Another thing that they say is that it offers profile switching. That's a Firefox feature. Split views is another Rivaldi feature. So if I have another tab open here, I can select both of these and then hit split two tabs and it'll show them side by side. That's cool. It's not something that I use nearly as often as I thought I would, especially once, and out, once I went to a desktop environment, but it is useful to have if you need two things side by side and you don't want to open separate windows. My only issue is that there's no way outside of closing one of the tabs for you to get out of the split mode, at least as far as I can tell. Even if you select both of them, you still don't have an option to 
unsplit those tabs. So you actually have to close one of them in order, you know, for, for it to go away. So if I close this tab, then we're out of the split mode. But I would like to, a way to keep both of them open because a lot of times I still need the, the web page open, but I don't need them tiled anymore, right? So that's one area that they need to improve on a little bit. So the other thing that they talk about is we talked about workspaces in the side panels, which were down here. Another thing that they talk about is speed and privacy. Now, these are two areas where I'm not at the top of my game. A lot of the stuff I can see here is that they just built it in basically with the Firefox stuff that you'd see, well, in Firefox. So I don't know that there's anything here that they've done extra. I didn't go and compare setting by setting Firefox in this, so there might be something here that, that they've put in that I, you know, didn't notice, but for me, it looks almost exactly like the Firefox security settings. So if you're going to use this and you didn't care for Firefox privacy and security, chances are, you know, you're not going to like this one. Now, I did notice that the Mozilla telemetry stuff isn't here and they do have telemetry here, but it's off by default, which is good, right? The Firefox stuff is actually on by default, which is the stupidest thing ever, considering it's supposed to be a privacy-focused browser. Uh, but maybe it's not anymore. I don't know. So they do have telemetry here, but as far as I can tell, you can't even turn it on. I, I'm not actually sure how you'd click these buttons. Maybe that's something that comes in the future and it's on by default. But as of, as of right now, uh, or maybe it's, it was during setup or whatever that it asked me, and I said no. I don't actually remember that part, but still, it does have telemetry, but at least for me, it was off. They also talk about their customization. So if you go to look and feel, this isn't as expansive as Florp. So if you use Florp, you can move the, the tabs around. You can move a lot of stuff around that you would be able to move around in something like Vivaldi. In Zen, not so much. You can change the color scheme. So if you wanted to make your color your green or whatever, you can also use Firefox themes as far as I know. You can enable a compact mode so that it basically takes away your tab mode and makes it floating. So if you hover over here, then it would, pop, it would pop out and then it would go away. That's cool. Again, something you could do with Firefox if you got into user chrome.css, but there's a nice little switch here. Basically, it allows you to become completely chromeless if you want to, meaning that you don't have access to your address bar or the tabs easily. Now, it does pop up if you hover over the edges of the screen, which, you know, is cool. I'm not sure how useful or efficient it actually is, but still, you can do that if you want to. You can also do something called use pilled buttons. To be honest with you, I'm not sure that I noticed a difference between the buttons when I turned this on, to be honest with you. It looks exactly the same. To me, maybe the difference is just so subtle that I'm not catching it. Or maybe you have to turn it off and turn it back on and again in order for that to take effect. I don't know. It doesn't say that, so whatever. Uh, it also allows you to have a floating URL bar when it's focused. So if I go up here and get this, it means it will have it in the center. I found that kind of cool, so I turned it on. It's not on by default, so you, know, you can just go to a, a URL there just like normal, and it's cool, right? So... Other than that, the customizability is less than I thought it would be, to be honest with you. I thought there'd be quite a bit more here, especially being able to move those tabs around, because that's a big feature that Florp has, and obviously Vivaldi has. Vivaldi, you can put the tabs on any of the four sides. You can do that. You can move the address bar up or down. You can do all these things, and that's just not here yet. So if you're looking for that level of customizability, this may not be for you. Um, personally, uh, I kind of miss it because I do move the tabs in the address bar up and down every once in a while just for, you know, to freshen things up, but I could live without it. So it's not that big of a deal. In terms of workspaces, there's not actually any settings other than just enable or disable. They do say that this is experimental. So I'm assuming that there will be more settings as this gets worked on. You can go in and change a whole bunch of your key bindings and there are quite a few to customize, but the ones that I was looking at, actually kind of looking for were for workspaces, and those, as far as I can tell, aren't actually here. One feature that I really do wish they had would be allow you to make your new tabs have a custom page. 
That's not something that Firefox lets you do either, which is unfortunate. You have to have an extension to do it, and it's the same here. Uh, Vivaldi, again, in a superior way, allows you to customize that basically to your heart's content. For synchronization, it uses the traditional Mozilla sync, so you have to have a Mozilla account to synchronize stuff. Uh, I usually leave this off in my Firefox browsers these days. I don't really need the synchronized stuff anymore because the Firefox mobile application is uh, not good. And because that uses the Mozilla stuff, you're, there is not actually a mobile version of Zen Browser as far as I can tell. So you're, you're going to be stuck with mobile Android such as it is. So the sync stuff here is not that big of a deal because at least not for me. So there's that. So the only other thing that I would talk about is the search. Now, it does offer Google and DuckDuckGo upon startup, so I chose DuckDuckGo. Uh, what I'm happy about here is that it doesn't offer Bing, so Vivaldi defaults to Bing and doesn't really let you change it upon startup or you know initial install. You have to go into the settings and splunk around and, and change it there, which is, again, not the best thing, I, I, I suppose, but they probably make some money off from it, whatever. So... Uh, they do allow you to choose that right upon startup, which is nice. Now, the last thing overall that I want to talk about a little bit is speed. I didn't run any speed tests because most of those are nonsense. I just kind of went over feel. It does feel like a fast browser, but all browsers feel like fast browsers to me unless they're slow browsers, in which case you notice. I didn't notice this being slow, so therefore it's a fast browser. Now, if you want to download this and run your speed test and see how many pages per second it can load, you can do that. I, To me, that's very unscientific and uh, whatever, right? But for me, it seemed to load very fast. Now, I will say that out of the box, Vivaldi offers ad blocking, where Zen does not. You have to get yourself a extension in order to do that. And that means that Vivaldi kind of out of the box would probably be faster because there's no ads that are loaded. It does that. Yeah, now it offers you the opportunity to to select that option, whereas in floor or excuse me, whereas in Zen you kind of have to go find an extension in order to do that. So uh, there are differences, and and that's the my main takeaway here is that first off, the polish here is very impressive because I'm coming from looking at floor where the polish wasn't as good. This looks very well put together, and because that's true, I find that I'm much more optimistic about where it's going, because if they add a feature, it's probably going to look, feel, and work very nicely, whereas I don't have that confidence with the floor browser. Uh, maybe it's a smaller team. Uh, maybe they just don't put as much effort into the stuff. I don't really know. I can't really ascribe their intentions there, but... It just felt like the stuff there was just kind of crammed in there. And that's what I talked about at the beginning, where a lot of those features that they're trying to be like Vivaldi on, they felt tacked on, and they didn't really seem like they fit. And that's not the case with the Zen browser, and that's very impressive and gives me hope for it in the future. But it is lacking still some things that I would need in order to switch to it. Things like tab groups, which are apparently coming. Things like being able to change the position of the tab bar. I don't want vertical tabs if I'm going to continue to be a tab order. I need to be able to move that stuff around. Uh, things like being able to create key bindings for the workspaces, things like that. They're just little things. And the fact that they are little things, you know, is still kind of impressive because it, it means that the major stuff is there. So this is a browser that I'm definitely going to be keeping my eye on because if tab groups end up being good and they continue to iterate, making features appear that I need, this could be a browser that would be a great alternative to Vivaldi, which means that I could abandon a browser that I find, you know, not open source enough. So, overall, I'm very impressed with the Zen browser. I, I do hope that they continue to iterate on it and make it better because, I'm, like I said, I'm going to be keeping an eye on it. And if they do, this could be my future browser. We'll have to see. So, if you're interested in the Zen browser, you can leave those in the comment section below. Thanks to whoever pointed me towards this on Discord. I'm sorry I don't remember your name. Thank you so very much for pointing it out. Also, if you want to follow me on Mastodon or Odyssey, those links will be in the video description. You can support me on Patreon at patreon.com slash linuxcast, just like all of these fine people. Thanks to everybody who does support me on Patreon and YouTube. You guys are all absolutely amazing without you the challenge just would not be anywhere near where it is right now so thank you so very very much for your support if you want to support me on patreon or youtube or kofi 
Those links will be in the video description below. You can also head on over to the store, which is the shop at the Linuxcast.org. There you'll find all sorts of awesome merchandise that will help you support the channel while also getting while also getting something really awesome in return. So shop at the Linuxcast.org. Thanks everybody for watching. I'll see you next time.